Yes, welcome this afternoon to Real Forecast. I am Tim Gordon, founder and CEO of the Black Real Awards. I am joined by our nominating chairperson and chairman, Cordell Martin Cordell. Welcome back to Real Forecast, brother. Good evening. Good evening. All right, man. Uh, you know, we've been real forecasting all week, man. And uh, our latest e uh, episode, we're going to be looking at uh, outstanding independent film contenders, as well as the outstanding screenplay contenders. And without any further ado, Cordell, let us kick off independent feature. Uh, and let's look at some of our, our top five contenders. All right. So <clears throat> our leading contenders. Here they are. Yeah. Ah, very nice. Okay. All right. I think I've seen enough. I think we can get started. Let's discuss these five contenders. All right. Concrete Cowboy, directed by Ricky Staub. Uh, this was a Netflix uh, distribution, dis distributed film. Uh, the synopsis, of course, sent to live with his estranged father with a summer. A rebellious teen finds kinship in the tight-knit Philadelphia community of Black Cowboys. Um, this was interesting, man. This, this movie, wow, this was last year? I mean, that was this year? It was. I think it came out March or like April. March, March or April, yeah, because it was a film that we saw on the festival circuit last year. I, when I say last year, I'm talking about 2020. So, um, yeah, this is, this is pretty interesting, man, because, again, as I say every show, I never get a chance to look at these things in advance, man. Cordell just kind of surprises me, and then I react to what it is that I see. Concrete Cowboy, um, I thought it was a really interesting story based that's, that's based on something very real, a community very real in Philadelphia. So, you know, so I'm glad to see that this one was captured on film. All right, who's up next? Ah, The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. This is from uh, Revolutions uh, Studio, home of Morgan Freeman, his production company, and uh, directed by David Meidel, uh, based on the true story of the events that led to the death of Kenneth Chamberlain Sr., an elderly African-American veteran with bipolar disorder who was killed during a conflict with police officers who were dispatched to check on him. Yeah, this, this was heavy. Um, got a chance to look at this one uh, several weeks ago. And from an independent standpoint, I can absolutely see how this film, uh, I think its chances are very, very strong, much like we didn't talk about the chances of Concrete Cowboy. I could clearly see that both these films are fitting sort of a model of uh, independent storytelling with our awards. Cordell, uh, I know I didn't go to you on uh, Concrete Cowboy, but let's talk a little bit about Concrete Cowboy and the killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. And how do you think these films factor in or why you made the decision to make both of these film leading, films leading contenders? Yes, yeah, so the beauty of the Black Real Awards is that you know we just don't honor filmmakers who have the name recognition or stars with the name recognition. One of the crowning jewels of our awards is that we honor those under the radar filmmakers and stories that often doesn't get a chance to be spotlighted in the mainstream. And the independent feature category is one of those categories and where we honor those up and coming filmmakers who've taken risk, who have um, created stories that may not be popular to the mainstream media and audiences or stories that are often overlooked. And so the case with these two films, you know, um, not the, everyday citizen is going to know about Kenneth Chamberlain or, you know, the Black cowboy um, community out East without these filmmakers taking a risk and showing those stories. So I think just because of those um, narratives, both of those films um, are very strong contenders in this category. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, and also let's not overlook Frankie Faison, who many people will remember as far back as um, coming to America, the original version uh, is in this. And, uh, and also Do the Right Thing is another film Frankie Faison uh, famously co-starred in. So he is very good. And this film is literally him on screen throughout the, the, the majority of the film uh, uh, in distress or trying to prevent from being in distress. 
So it's a very, very strong yet heavy film, but I think it's one that deserves an audience. And uh, I think it's a wonderful choice uh, as a leading contender, man. So who's up next? Oh my God, yeah, this film here, man. Uh, Nine Days, directed by Edison Oda. Stars Winston Duke and Zazie Beetz. Uh, Duke plays a reclusive man who conducts a series of interviews with human souls for the chance to be born reflective, meditative, very, you know, very slowly uh, paced. Yet Winston Duke is really, really good in this film. And uh, I think this film, along with, I think, one other film that I saw briefly that you flashed on there, are probably going to be the two films that I think have the best chance, not just to get nominated, but getting out of this, this category and battling. My only issue, and we've talked about this uh, in, in you know, previous shows, that it's an availability issue because they have not done a good job of getting this film back out here in front of voters. And if you didn't see it this summer, it's, it's not really easily accessible now for a lot of the voting academy members to check out. Uh, Cordell, give me your feelings on what our, our strong performances from Zazie Beats, who's getting a lot of love and attention and uh, the harder they come. And of course, Winston Duke, who everybody knows from Black Panther. Um, talk a little bit about Nine Days and why you made the decision with this film. Yeah, like we've been discussing before, you know, this is a great film with strong performances. Um, once again, it is a, a type of film that, you know, we often don't see portrayed with us in the lead. So the fact that it's the unique storytelling, um, with the great performances that were delivered by Winston Duke, Zazie Beats, among others. Um, I think it would be a strong contender. To your point, the only thing hurting it is that it came out so early um, in the summertime. So um, unfortunately, we'll see if a lot of voters were able to watch it. However, I think it has a strong shot um, at, at least being nominated. <clears throat> No, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. And it's sad because, you know, one of our colleagues uh, talks about that this is one of their favorite films of the year and laments the fact that didn't feel the studio is doing a really, really good job of getting it out there in front of people. So time will tell, but we got a couple of weeks to go. And as of now, I haven't I haven't gotten a lot of feedback on it from a lot of other people whether they've seen it or not, but it definitely deserves a place as a leading contender if people can see it. All right, so what's up next, Cordell? Oh, uh, yes, uh, Angel Christy Williams' this film, Really Love, which is DC-based, uh, that talks about contemporary DC, uh, where a rising Black painter strives to break into the competitive art world while balancing a bittersweet romance he never expected Kofi Sarabo, Sarabo, excuse me, from Queen Sugar. And um, I can't remember the young lady's name who plays his lead, who's a Dutch actress, believe it or not, that they found uh, in this story. This one, this one is really interesting. Um, uh, I can I understand and, and know why you put this film in this category, um, but comparing it to some of the other films that are in here, Yes, it's going to be pretty dicey, man. And this one, depending on, I'm waiting to find out a little later on about our spoilers. This is a film that I think could be right to be picked off that you have in your leading contenders. Uh, Cordell, am I, am I over-dramatizing or did you see something else that I don't see with this film? No, I agree. Um, I think out of the five leading contenders, this is the one that could um, get uh, knocked off for another film. Um, the reason I put this film as a leading contender is A, it premiered on Netflix, um, and then which is the whole romance aspect. You know, that's always one of those go-to genres um, when it comes to Black content that is easily accessible. And so um, for a lot of audiences and maybe critics, this might be one of those type of films that, you know, they can escape from, you know, what's going on in the world right now. And so sometimes those films kind of get some love just because of the escapism that they uh, represent. Okay. I mean, you, you see my face, I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm, 
I, I am, like I said, I watched this film a couple of times. And uh, yeah, let's go to the last film because I think I know what the last film is. Yeah, my point. So when you, you put these five films together there, four of them are sort of here and then you've got one that's right here. So Zola is uh, not just one of the best indie films of the year. It's, this is a strong film. We talked about this on another show when we were previewing directors or indie directors that uh, Ms. Bravo is, you know, has done an amazing job taking this story that's based on a stripper named Zola who embarks on a wild trip to Florida. And it was based on some tweets that occurred back in 2015. And they have taken this story with, you know, and crafted something that's very watchable, uh, headlined by Taylor Page with an amazing supporting performance by um, Coleman Domingo that uh, deserves, that makes this film something special. It has two really transformative performances in there. And Taylor Page, who many of us were introduced to in um, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom uh, a year ago, where she had a small role as kind of, you know, uh, playing the, 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 the side piece to Ma Rainey, uh, Viola Davis in that film. She steps out into the forefront in this one. She's really, really good, very believable, has the right energy. The story, everything about this film as an indie project really, really works. I think this is one of the stronger candidates along with unfortunately nine days, if people can see it. But Zola is right there, man, in this category, Cordell. I agree. I definitely think that out of the five, this is probably your front runner, um, just because I think it's really competitive in several categories that we just mentioned, uh, where it could be an outside contender. Once again, it just boils down to how many people watch the film. So be on the lookout for this, probably the front runner. I got you. I got you. So let's take a look at which one of the spoilers has the best opportunity to try to make that jump. And let me see. Wow, this is interesting. This has been an interesting year. Okay. Well, there's one film that jumps out. Uh, actually, a couple. So we've got Gully, which I have not had an opportunity. Wow. Wow. Gully is, as an indie film, is that playing on one of the streaming services or platforms right now, Cordell? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was just out for limited release. I mean, it might be on video on demand, but I don't think it's on any particular streaming platform. So wait a minute. Am I looking at Terrence Howard, Jonathan Majors, Kelvin Harrison, and I forget the young brother's name, in Gully? Is, is that the cast? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Good, good cast. Uh, Monster, which is a film I saw at Sundance. God, 2017? That movie has been around, kicking around for a while before it finally got distribution. Of course, Kelvin Harrison again, which is really interesting because he's made a bunch of these movies. And the fact that he's in two of the spoilers, that's really interesting. Uh, the Waterman, of course, I think that's Netflix. Am I correct? Yes, and this is David O'Yellow's um, directorial debut. Yeah, Rosario Dawson and uh, forget the young young guy's name. Um, I can't remember what I saw him in. Is he had been in? What has he been? Huh? Played young Rand plays young Randall, and this is us. Right, I was going to say he looks like he looks like. I'm trying to remember. Was it This Is Us? So yes, it is This Is Us. Uh, first date. I'm not familiar with that either. Nor am I familiar with Test Pattern. This is why we love Cordell Martin, man. Because Cordell finds some stuff. I'm like, huh? <laughs> so three of these films in this category i'm very unfamiliar with but the fact that you got jonathan majors uh kelvin harrison and terrence howard my god where has he been uh you know in this category so i don't know i mean i think we talked earlier about really love uh not being the strongest film uh you never know man i mean the Waterman is a film that's that's david oyelo or rosario dawson uh, it has an, has an opportunity. Monster may have an opportunity to get in to the independent uh, top five before it's all said and done. Uh, and we'll wait and see. We're a couple of weeks away from nominations being announced on, this, on Thursday, December the 16th. And of course, the show takes place on Sunday, February the 27th, 2022. Uh, Cordell, before we get out of here and wrap up our outstanding independent film, 
Um, I just want to understand just one question for you. You said we don't know if Gully is on a platform. We know that both Monster and The Waterman are probably on the Netflix platform. Uh, anywhere, uh, you know, uh, folks who are watching us at home can check out either First Date or Test Pattern. I know Test Pattern, I think, just uh, premiered on Showtime. Okay. So if you have Showtime, you can watch that on demand. Um, first date, I'm not sure as to where it's um, playing right now. I know it was just released for a limited release in theaters. Um, right. I think it played at Tribeca, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. Okay. Um, Tribeca, and I think it on Sundance too. All right. Well, we'll try to check some of these out, man. But if you're at home, this is kind of the lineup that we're looking at uh, for Outstanding Independent Feature. And these are the, 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 the five spoilers. We went over the five leading contenders. And there's always an opportunity, as you know, Cordell, that something else can sneak in here and emerge, like we were talking earlier when we did another show. There's another film that I think that is going to make a run that we didn't talk about at all today, at least through our uh, projections. But it's always interesting, man, checking this out. All right, so any final feedback on the independent film category? You know, anything historic that people need to know as it relates to what the Voting Academy has done that will give us some sort of an idea of the direction that we could possibly be looking at in several weeks? Um, I would say with this category, definitely this is kind of a um, snapshot as to who are the rising stars in Hollywood. Um, you know, this is the category where you see people like Ava DuVernay or the Ryan Kuglers or um, Rada Blank. Um, those are the type of people that you see who kind of get their, you know, footing with their independent features and then just rise through the ranks and become mainstays, at least with the Black Real Awards in terms of their projects. So be on the lookout for a lot of these filmmakers and talent in these films because you'll see a lot more from them in the upcoming years. Got it, got it. All right. Well, that wraps up sort of, uh, not sort of, it wraps up our look at the outstanding independent film category. So now it is time for us to, go, to look at uh, this next category, which uh, I'm very interested to see how you have projected the outstanding screenplay uh, front runners and spoilers. So let's take a look briefly at your projection of your top five. Yes, so as to the viewers watching, um, just one thing to note, in order to be eligible, you must have at least one writer of um, African-American or African descent. Um, so with that, there'll be a lot of key films that we've talked about a lot in previous uh, Real Forecast conversations that are not eligible. So just wanna get King that Richard. out. King Richard, <laughs> right. I knew that was coming. So King <laughs> Richard, Bruised, oh my God, Swan Song and the Tragedy of Mac Macbeth are not eligible. Wow. King Richard, that one hurts. Because if King Richard uh, had, the, had the screenwriter, that would be sort of a blockbuster attempt. And Bruised as well. So that's sort of, that's sort of like, mm, okay. All right. Got, I'm glad you got that out the way quick. That's pretty good to know that these four are not eligible. In this in the screenwriting because they have no not they have not African American or people or anyone of African descent uh, who put pen to paper for any of these four projects. So, what five films are you now projecting? I, I sound like Wolf Blitzer, man, like on election night. What what are you projecting? <laughs> Will be the the uh, show us the group of the five front runners for outstanding screenplay original or adept there we go wow 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 oh man this is uh okay all right i see i do feel like wolf blitzer because i see a path to victory but <laughs> let's let's talk about it right now let's, who's up first all right uh, Candyman, uh, written by Jordan Peele, Nia DaCosta, and Lynn Rosen Rosenfeld. Uh, this could be the first nomination in this category for DaCosta and Rosenfeld. Peele has three previous nominations and two wins for Get Out and Us in this category. Candyman is a strong one, man, like we talked about on a previous show. 
uh, from a film standpoint. Uh, and I'm sorry, I think we talked about Nia, Nia DaCosta and her uh, and her um, uh, being one of the leading contenders for right. what was said it again, right. director. Right. Yeah. So this is this film. I like. I'll say the same thing that now that I said then that I think that that I enjoyed the take on what they did with the character, where it wasn't just necessarily a horror movie, but whole makes it in gentrification adding some elements from the first film to try to tie in the continuity. I thought it worked well. It is probably a film that's psychologically horror, horror, but it's not necessarily a slasher like you would expect a Candyman film to be. And uh, this one, I think, is pretty good. I mean, Cordell, what are you feeling about? I mean, I don't even look at it. I mean, I guess in a way you could look at it that of Jordan Peele and, and kind of the legitimacy that he brings as a screenwriter. I think Jordan Peele helps it get nominated. After that, I think it's it becomes, you know, if it's nominated, uh, how are people looking at the overall quality of the film, you know, Candyman versus some of the other films that are in the category. But I do think Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele's name helps it in the nomination process. I agree. I think it'll definitely be a strong contender for nomination uh, in terms of the win. I think there's two films and we'll cover them that I think it's going to be neck and neck in terms of who wins the screenplay. You know, what's really interesting. Uh, we, we have talked, you know, uh, you know, internally about the need to create uh, branches, you know, for our, you know, well, we have, well, we have branches now, but we're looking at creating more specific branches moving forward. And Cordell, this film would be a wonderful case study if a branch existed with directors to see if films like this, how they would fare with, with, with all directors nominating a work versus the entire group right now. Now that would be very interesting to see. Yeah, man. I mean, so, so this is the kind of thing like my, 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 the, the wheels are turning in year 22, like, Hmm. Okay. Cause now, cause now we're at a stage with our awards that it's not necessarily just about year to year. We now have a sample size that goes back 21 years that we can kind of look at the, the research and the data. And a film like Candyman is interesting. And the reason why I'm saying it's interesting is because you, you've got in the screen screenplay category, you've got a film that would be acknowledged to be sort of a horror film. It's not like a drama, but it's a horror film. And technically horror films don't, don't ascend to this level but the fact that Jordan Peele has made two of these films that had been pretty successful, including Get Out, which I think swept the year and it, it was nominated. As I said earlier, it's, it's wonderful that Jordan Peele's name is on it. And I think that gets people's attention when you're looking at this as a screenplay nominee. So I guess the next film will be a much more traditional film. <laughs> well, well, a little more traditional than a horror film, because again, Western, have we ever had, I mean, think about this for a second. Has there been a Western ever in the Black Real Awards in the last 21 years? Um, the I mean, They Die by Night was a short. Um, I'm trying to think. Western? Think the Magnificent Seven. Um, Antoine Fuqua was nominated for director. Denzel was nominated for actor. Um, I mean, Django is more of like a spaghetti Western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and seeing both of those cases, yeah, Jamie Foxx in one, yeah, Denzel Washington in the other. And no disrespect, there's really not that level of a star in this unless you want to count Regina King, who I think is the biggest thing in this movie, right? But uh, Boaz Yakin, who I know, I don't know what, what he's been nominated for before, but I've seen that name in the Black Real Awards before. So I know he's been nominated for something in James Samuels. This would be the first the nomination in this category for Yakin and Samuel. So maybe I'm wrong. I just know the name. But The Heart of They Fall is the film that I think is not just going to be a problem in this category. I think it's going to be a problem in a lot of categories, like across the board, you know, actor, supporting actress, supporting actor, actress and actor, uh, director, screenplay, film. This one is going to be soundtrack. You know, it's like, this one's going to be a problem in a lot of areas. And James Samuels is probably going to be um, um, 
one of the contenders for emerging filmmaker. Am I correct? Yep. Wow. Yeah, man. So uh, there's nothing you can say about it. Cordell, I give it to you, man, because we're going to be talking about the heart of they fall a lot. Um, the, the only question I have for you is over or under 13, over or under for nominations for this film? Mm, I'm over 13. I think so, too. Uh, and I, pick, I just picked a random number. I could have said 15. It probably would still be over. Yeah, I think uh, over to 15. I mean, if they really, really love it, it could tie with Black Panther. Wow. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it, it seems like that kind of film. I mean, from everybody I've talked to, whether there are folks who in the industry or folks outside the industry, this film plays really, really well. And the fact that it has a, a, a cast of people that people like Jonathan Majors is having a, 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 you know, he's having a good year. Regina King is Regina King. Idris Elba, people are happy to see him back again. Zazie Beats is sort of on a roll. We talked earlier about nine days with her. And then you've got some other characters in here. Uh, Lakeith Stansfield is kind of a, is kind of a dependable actor. So this film right here, uh, there's not much to say other than we're playing the waiting game to find out what the final tally is going to be. But the harder they fall, yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty good. <laughs> Definitely the leading contender in this category. Um, I think the only thing that could hurt it is that this will be the first time that a Western has been nominated in this category. So we'll just kind of see how the voters, you know, <laughs> Look that, at it. That's that's your problem. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that as a problem at all. It's a first. Watch this. There's always room for another first. So yeah. So I mean, you know, as Jordan Peele has been able to show in terms of you know the horror genre being able to break through in the writing categories, um, this could be the same thing for the harder they fall. All right, man. So who's up next, man? All right. So a more traditional. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and passing is also interesting because, you know, we talk about this uh, Rebecca Hall, who uh, I, I hate to say it this way, but it's so true. We've watched Rebecca Hall's work for years. She's never directed. This is her directorial debut. Um, you know, we just didn't know, man. I was I was teasing somebody earlier. There's a great line in uh, Living for the City, you know, in, in, in the middle of the song. The character is told, hey, brother, for five dollars, take this across the street. And of course, when he takes across the street, police arrest him. He goes, I didn't know. And that's how I feel about Rebecca Hall. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't know <laughs> Rebecca Hall was biracial. We could have considered her for stuff years ago, but nobody yeah. knew. So Cordell, uh, you know, Passing is a film that we've talked a lot about. We love the look. We love the, the execution of the story. The performances by the leads, uh, Ruth Nega, Tessa Thompson, Andre Holland, Rebecca Hall's screenplay, which is quiet and reflective, the cinematography, which is mono, monochromatic. Uh, th there's a lot to say positive about this film. Um, do I think it has a good shot of getting a nomination? Absolutely. But as I've said on several other shows, the nomination is the win for this film because the harder they fall is in contention this year. And if the harder they fall is not in contention, you got to get past King Richard too. And it's like two juggernauts at the top of the food chain. It's going to be very difficult, but I think there is some prestige in receiving the Black Real Award nomination. And Tessa Thompson, who last year got the nomination as well, I, I don't know how many she's gotten now, maybe four or five. But Tessa Thompson for work in films like Creed, Last year in Sylvie's Love, in this film, Tessa Thompson is very, very steady uh, in what she's doing. And, you know, much like Will Smith has had to, to pay his dues and, you know, he's 0 for 8 and this might be the year that he finally breaks through. Tessa Thompson has already broken through because I know she was nominated for Colored Girls, for Colored Girls. What else has she been nominated for? Um, well, she won for Breakthrough for, for Colored Girls. Yeah. And she was an actress for Creed. Um, so she has at least two, um, and she's been nominated for the league actress category um, as recent as this year with Sylvie's Love. Um, she's actually have a song nomination. She sung uh, one of the songs in the um, original Creed film. So 
she's been a mainstay um, in terms of the Black Real Awards and voting. Um, so definitely to your point, passing will be a um, major nominee. I don't know if it will win anything. We shall see once the nominations come out. Hopefully it doesn't uh, tie with Black Klansmen or exceeds Black Klansmen's record for the most nominations. <laughs> <laughs> And how many how many nominations did Black Klansmen get? Was it eleven? I think eleven. Yeah, because you know it 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 took out Baby Boy out the record books. Baby Boy was zero for ten. That was always like, how'd that happen? Hey man, it happens some years. You know, you look at the Academy Awards Turning Point and the Color Purple are tied. Uh, each had eleven nominations and no win. So, you know, I guess uh, Black Klansmen is, is our Color Purple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's up next, man? Oh, yeah, now this one is really interesting, too. Uh, Respect, written by Tracy Scott Wilson. It would be the first nomination in this category for Tracy Scott Wilson. Uh, just take much of what I just said about passing and put it on this film. Respect is a movie that I think Jennifer Hudson has a, has a wonderful shot to try to crack the top five as a nominee in the Best Actress field. But after that, man, I don't see a lot of love for respect, man. I mean, A, respect came out in August. B, I think it's hurt Cordell from the fact that Nat Geo had the Genius Aretha series, which was seven or eight episodes. It's about eight hours of Aretha Franklin versus the two and a half hours in this movie. Thirdly, I think that the fact that one of the things that I said to you when I first saw it, is the fact that it only spans roughly 12 years of her life and she lived such a rich life of distinction. There, there, there are a lot of things about the film to like, namely Jennifer Hudson, but there's equally a lot of things that I don't think are executed or work as well as some of the other contenders in this category. I'm gonna be quiet right now. Cordell, give me your take on respect as a, as a, a potential nominee. Yeah, I mean, the reason I have it as a top five is that, um, you know, with a lot of those juggernauts who were already excluded just because they weren't eligible, I kind of looked at respect as, okay, it's kind of your paint by the numbers biopic. Um, you know, it didn't really, if you're a huge Aretha Fran fan, or if you're not a huge Aretha fan, it didn't really did a deep dive into who Aretha is. Um, a lot of it was very surface level that you can just look up on Wikipedia, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, I thought Jennifer Hudson's performance was great. Um, I think it will probably receive nominations in our music category, so probably score, original song, which we covered earlier. Um, and then maybe some of your below the line categories, I could definitely see it nominated for costumes and maybe production design. So it might get a few nominations here and there, but um, I think this will be one of the few categories where it at least has a strong shot in being a final nominee. All righty, so let's take a look. Okay, so before we get to our list of spoilers, trying to think what's in this category. So pass and the harder they fall. We got one uh, more. Huh? One more. Oh, we got one more. Okay, I'm sorry. I, my, my apologies. I'm already thinking ahead. It's somebody, somebody's getting picked off. Now, here's another film. I can't, you know, every time Zola comes up in conversation, you, you see this look on my face like, this is a good one. This, this one's pretty strong and written by, I want to say Jangza. Damn, I, can't, I, I hate messing up her name. Miss Bravo and Jeremy O. Harris. This will be the first nomination in this category for both Bravo and Harris. Um, you know, I've said it once, I've said it twice. I love how you have the table uh, guarding the breast here um this zola's really good film man this, this is this is a strong film that i think works in multiple categories whether it's for the director whether it's for the screenplay whether it's for taylor page's performance we talked about coleman domingo there are multiple ways that this film can can uh can receive nominations and again much like i've said for some of the other films that the 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 nomination in this these films are the win because I think that you know you we have we have two large lions in this category or in the in the awards space this year uh, and and you we've you know which films I'm talking about I don't have to keep saying it but uh, this film right here in the independent space ought to do pretty well because of what it is 
the messaging, how it's been marketed. I, I like this film a lot and I've said I've liked it a lot. So Zola is definitely one. So I'm trying to think what, what, what else is in this category? What's the weakest film in this category? Is it Respect? Yeah, if I had to choose out of the five, I say Respect. All right, so let's look at the spoilers right now because I'm always trying to see if there's one film that can take out one of the uh, one of the contenders, and I want I need to see what's what you have as a spoiler. I don't know, but real quick with Zola. Um, oh, go on, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Of course, if it is nominated, um, one thing to note with this category is that oftentimes the most nominated film, at least in the past two years, isn't the front runner in this category. So we've seen a couple surprises with um, the 40 year old version winning last year. That was not like, that was not projected as a front runner last year. Well, I mean, like one night in Miami, Ma Rainey, you know, those type of films. OK, the- OK, I got you. I got you. OK, see, see, this is what I'm talking about, that 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 history that happens. So this is this is the stuff that people at home need to know. All right, so which one of these films is going respect hunting this year? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um. There's one. I see one. Uh. I see one. <laughs> That's all I have. So we talk again. We talked in the um. And uh, the independent category about test pattern was a spoiler there. Uh, Coming to America. Wow. Um, Man, uh, no comment. Uh, Bad Trip. You have Coming to America and Bad Trip in this category? No comment. And Malignant. Malignant. Talk a little bit about Malignant because this is one I have not seen. Yeah, so um, I believe it just premiered about a month or two ago. Um, the writer, um, I think her name is uh, Akila Cooper. She wrote an episode of Luke Cage. Mm, okay. okay. So, um, it's received pretty positive reviews from the critics. Um, and of course, it's part of that horror genre. So if enough voters have watched it, um, she could yeah. be a contender. Um, out of the five, I mean. Yeah, there's only one, man. I mean, you, you, why are we even pretending, man? It, uh, if, if, if anybody's going to pick somebody off, a journal for Jordan is going to be the one. Yeah. Uh, no disrespect to Coming to America. I just basically said, if you want to watch Coming to America, just watch the first one. Uh, there's no need for you to, to go down that, as Richard Pryor once said, that dark alleyway, looking for something. Uh, it's nostalgia. Um, but, you know, you, 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 never mind. I, I, see, I, I, I'm going to get in trouble, so I'm going to leave it alone. But yes, coming to America and Bad Trip shows that there is a that there is a dearth <laughs> of, of films missing that were not eligible this year because you know some of these films weren't even made to cut. So I think Respect might be safe unless Jordan, a journal for Jordan, is able to knock it out. But um, nevertheless, I still think it's a strong category that has one really, really good film in it that I think is going to be, to quote, uh, you know, the language from Lord of the Rings, one one movie to rule them all in that category. All right, Cornell, so do you have any other feedback on these contenders? Is there anybody we missed? Uh, is there a film, like choice 11 or 12 out there? And you was like, nah, I'm not messing with 11 and 12. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock with these 10. I think we we're good. <laughs> All right, I got you. Um, so I like I said, man. Uh, any closing remarks before we uh, end the end this episode of Real Forecast? Because this is actually a lot of fun, man. Um, looking at these contenders, and I know for the most part that it will be beneficial to a lot of the voters who uh, will have an opportunity because voting starts in about a week. Uh, so. If you're a voter and you're watching this at home, this helps not necessarily just tell you what films you should be voting for, but I think you should take a dive into looking at some of these stories, or if you're interested in something and you haven't had a chance to check it out, this is your window in order to do that. But if you're at home and you're watching this, you can kind of follow along and go, oh snap, I haven't heard a test pattern. I need to go and check that movie out. Or I need to look at some of these performances that Cordell and Tim are talking about so much. So. 
it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. So it sounds like Cordell is tapped out. Uh, <laughs> as we tell you guys in closing every week, please see something good at the movies. We've given you tons of recommendations as we do on every show. Uh, the nominations for the 22nd Annual Black Real Awards will be announced on Thursday, December the 16th. And the Black Real Award, 22nd Annual Black Real Awards will take place Sunday night, February 27th, 2022. 2 27 22. Got to be on top of that. Until yeah. next time, I'm assuming we still got some more forecasts to do before. Uh, before the nominations are announced, Cordell, is that correct? Yeah, we have so many categories we still got to scratch the surface on, so yeah. All right. Well, we will see you guys next time on Real Forecast. On behalf of Cordell Martin, I'm Tim Gordon, and we'll see you guys next time. You have a nice evening.